The Maple Leafs split the weekend games an inch closer to clinching home ice advantage in round one. And uh, Dave, Joe Wall making a name for himself. Can he get himself into the goalie rotation down the stretch? Let's break it all down on today's edition of Locked on Leafs. Your Locked on Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the March 27th edition of the Lockdown Leafs podcast, your one-stop shop for all things Leafs. I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, also known as Al's Brother on TSN's Overdrive and TSN 1050's Leafs Lunch. Joining me, it's my co-host, Dave Morissuti from Sportsnet, also a writer for the NHLPA. Lockdown Leafs, a daily Maple Leafs-centric podcast, so be sure to subscribe for free. Wherever you get your podcast from, you can also catch us up on YouTube. Search up Lockdown Leafs. We've got new content, new videos, new podcasts five days a week, each and every weekday morning. Uh, make sure you also hit the little notification bell if you're on YouTube to be alerted when we drop those new episodes. A uh, couple of games this weekend. Leafs with a back to back. They split the series, a 5 3 loss to the Carolina Hurricanes, and a 3 2 win on their second night of the back-to-back against the Nashville Predators. And Dave, funny enough, like these felt like two very similar games where the Leafs kind of asleep at the wheel the first few minutes. They were outshot heavily in the first five to eight minutes of the hockey game. And that really took over and with a better team the rest of the way. Yeah, very much so. I think the Leafs, yeah, complete identical MOs of these games. And uh, maybe it's it's something we're going to maybe see a little bit more of just, you know, feeling the opponent out a little bit and then just flip a switch and kind of just establish your dominance. I don't know if it's exactly the recipe for success you want, but I mean, like pretty decent efforts, I'll say on, uh, especially in back to back situations. I thought maybe the game in Nashville, part of that had to do with the back to back earlier start, I thought maybe that played a factor, but then I think Nashville also played the night before. So both teams were coming off back to backs, but yeah, I mean, you, you would have liked to have gotten the full four points or at least three points out of the weekend. But I thought, you know, two games, the Leafs could have, well, one game they won possibly two. They could have easily won. Well, luckily the, uh, <laughs> the Tampa lightning don't seem to be on any, good role right now so it's not as if they're kind of making up ground on toronto anyways so that's good i think as of now just currently looking it up they sit there they're still up at the top of uh or not the top they're in second place where they have been all year they're up seven points right now with a game in hand over the tampa bay lightning and there's still one game to go between those two uh those two teams as well so that'll be an important game toronto wins that game it's it's over curtains gone like they're they've Toronto has locked up home ice advantage, then that would be it. I think right now, like a good wager would to say they'll end up winning home ice, uh, barring any type of, you know, situation where Toronto really, really hits a skid at the end. And that'll be more worrisome than losing home ice. It's just the fact that, uh (laughs) uh-oh. But that's not what it looks like, because I thought they played a terrific game tonight. Like, that game against Carolina was, was, was a real solid game, and, Pyotr Kachekov, the the young Russian goaltender there, like he had to make, I mean, that the, the Leafs easily could have scored five, six, seven goals against Carolina. Like they had a lot of really good looks, and uh, Kachekov was was all over the place, and he really allowed them to kind of stay in it and and keep his team ahead for the most part. And then once Toronto tied it, Carolina, you know, scored twenty seconds later to make it four three, and then they got an empty netter. So, um, but Toronto probably deserved you know some points in that game at least one point so that they played great the nashville game legitimately dave one of the better games that i've seen this team play i mean you take away that first five six minutes where they're out shot like seven nothing or something stupid like that 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 might be the best i've seen these maple Leafs play this season they were terrific in the offensive end they were you know so many opportunities in tight they were working fighting for center ice, they were getting all these slot opportunities, good chances, keeping cycles alive, keeping second opportunities alive at the blue line with an active stick. 
defensively. They didn't really allow anything. I think I saw they had four slot shots allowed in the entire game at five on five. Four. The Maple Leafs had like 20. (laughs) It was was a, a clinic that they put on. There was an element of physicality from a lot of these guys. Justin Hall blew up a dude. And then you had Joseph Wall playing excellent, excellent goaltender. So the goalie was an A-plus tonight. Defensively, they're an A-plus tonight. And the forward group, you can give them all pretty much an A-plus as well. Everybody really contributing or at least getting a lot of opportunities and chances. I thought this game against Nashville was super encouraging and uh, one of the better that we've seen. And it's nice to see that it comes just as we gear up for the final stretch and into the playoffs. I think the important thing to keep in mind here is like, look, there's a universe where the Carolina Hurricanes should beat the Toronto Maple Leafs just based on how they've been playing this season, all those factors. But what I liked about this win against Nashville is Nashville clearly should not be beating the Leafs. They don't have the talent that matches up against the Leafs really that much. They have their backup goaltender in net. And the Leafs not only beat them, but beat them in convincing fashion. And that's what I think I liked most about that game. And yeah, the, a lot of good individual performances that you can take out of it. But then once you saw that they got over that little lull at the beginning where Nashville was just throwing everything on net, Toronto just got, got their legs under them. They got the chemistry started building again. And yeah, like that's, I, I mean, pretty good, two pretty good games. But yeah, like I just like the fact that they knew that they could beat Nashville. They weathered that storm and the confidence just from there. Almost every line, you could see that they were had some sort of impact on this game. Like there weren't as many passengers. Like you're not relying totally on the top six to do everything. Guys lower in the lineup were contributing in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, and, and you know, if it wasn't on the score sheet, it was defensively, it was killing penalties, it was, you know, back checking, four checking. You know, there was a lot of really good things that we saw happen uh, in this game and in Carolina, both games. I thought, like, again, Toronto played extremely well for the final 50 or so minutes of those games. Um, A couple things that I think we do need to kind of dive into a little bit. One, Austin Matthews, this guy is heating up. And there is a Joe Wall conversation that is being had online right now. We'll discuss if we think there's any merit to it. Is Joe Wall going to factor into this into the crease conversation down the stretch and into the playoffs. Well, we could chat about all of that on the other side, but first Dave, I'm going to work for one of our show sponsors. Yes. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by AG one by athletic greens. The grip of winter is finally being loosened and you may be trying to get back into a more healthy and active lifestyle. What better way to pair with some new exercise habits than having a new daily dose of nutritional insurance in the form of AG one. With one delicious scoop of AG1 and a glass of water each day, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, nervous system, immune system, energy recovery, focus, and aging, all of those things I just listed. It's also lifestyle-friendly whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, gluten-free. AG1 contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or anything artificial. While still also tasting good and supporting better sleep quality recovery, mental clarity, and alertness. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you one free supply of immune supported vitamin D for a whole year and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your help and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Welcome back into the Lockdown Leafs podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti, your hosts here at Lockdown Leafs. We do daily Maple Leafs podcast. If it's your first time stumbling upon us, well, hopefully that you enjoy the content that we're providing you and just know that we do this each and every weekday we got five shows coming to you each and every week, every morning. So make sure that you do subscribe and leave a comment down below. Your thoughts on this weekend's game. Did it encourage you going forward down the stretch as we're now down to the final 10 games of the season? Actually, less. I think there's only nine games of the season now after after this game, I do believe. That was game 73, right? 
Yeah, we were at 73 games. Yeah, so nine games under the single digit mark before we uh we get to for the real game start, pal. The real game start, but it's nice to see that the Leafs uh, still got some some battle in them. Um, couple things that we got to get to. I I think we got to talk about Austin Matthews and you know how encouraging it is to see this guy rounding back into form as his MVP self. Like the game in Carolina, he was a man on a mission. Man on a mission, David. Like I, the guy finally ended up scoring a goal. Scored twice in that game. He had 15 shots, and it looked like he could have had five or six goals. Like he, it wasn't just little fluff shots. Like these were real quality looks, and it just, it, it seemed to me like this guy. There was no doubt in my mind he was going to put a puck in the back of the net. Didn't do it once. He did it twice. It was just the fourth time all season that he's been able to get himself a, a multi-goal game. Great to see out of Austin Matthews. And it was great to see it against a high-quality opponent, too, in a playoff-like atmosphere. That's that's such an encouraging performance because we've seen those performances, but I don't think we've seen them in those circumstances enough. You know, We talk about the playoffs, and part of the problem has been the Stars haven't really brought their A game in the playoffs. If Austin Matthews plays like that in the playoffs... Like the Leafs, you you love the Leafs' chances. That's the Austin Matthews that they need. And I think, yeah, the 15 shots was so impressive. And you brought up the fact that they weren't just like, you know, just throwing anything on that. No, these were like high-quality chances. Um, you know, he, he could have had, I think, I counted six goals myself in that <laughs> game. Just like how many times he got past the, the Hurricanes' defense, which is not very easy to do. So. Later, so according to natural stat trick at five on five alone, let me see what his, uh, his numbers is throughout the entire game. Oh my God, this is ridiculous. So, <laughs> so throughout the entire game, I guess. So the full, how many play he played 22 minutes and 19 seconds, which is about a third of the game, a little more than a third of the game. His individual expected goals, 1.98. So basically was expected to score two goals, but individual scoring chances, 14, of the 14 individual scoring chances he had in that game, 11 of them were considered high danger chances. 11 high danger chances himself, David, himself. There, there are times where teams can't even get 11 in a game. No. Like just teams in general. Yeah. You mean like the Nashville Predators tonight who only had nine? Yeah, I think they had four. I think I saw Keith mention they had four, four slot, four slot shots. Yeah, four slot shots. But as a whole, like through 60 minutes of play, not even at five on five, as a whole, only nine high danger shots. Um, chances is what Nashville had tonight. Mc Matthews had 11 by himself in the game against Carolina. And again, was just as ruthless tonight. Like tonight, he had so many good looks. And, you know, he didn't end up bearing, but he had a couple of assists in, in this game against Nashville. Um, and of course, you know, he had some good opportunities to score, just didn't find the back of the net, but what do you have? Three shots uh, at five on five. How many do you have in total? Five shots on goal and, uh, six individual scoring chances tonight. So he was around it tonight again. Yeah. He slowed down a little bit tonight, you know, just, just very unacceptable for us. Matthews, you know, I have to put up 15. It's crazy because like, I even looked, what's the most shots on goal players had in the game. Ray Bork had like 19 shots on goal in a game. I can't remember. Uh, like, it's just nuts to think. I didn't even think a player when they I've seen like Ovech could put up 10 shots on goal multiple times. I just would never think a player could actually get up to 15 just because of how hard it is to get chances on net. I think like an impressive game where a guy gets five on net, but to get 15 is just utterly ridiculous. And yeah, even and the good thing about like against Carolina. Yeah. Who is one of the best shot suppression teams exactly. in the National Hockey League? That's what's almost even more impressive. It's just who it was against. As like if it happens against, you know, Arizona, or if it happens against who's actually playing some good hockey right now. But we'll say it happens against like Columbus or against Anaheim. You know, those teams that are really out of it, where the defense is terrible. It's still extremely impressive, but it's like okay, well, those teams just suck. This is the Carolina freaking Hurricanes, who are have arguably one of the best you know, defensive structures in the NHL and have for years. And this guy's able to rip 15 on net. Crazy. Absolutely ridiculous. Like, um, 
Just yeah, go gotta ahead. love it. Go ahead. No, I mean, you just have to love it because we, like we, we hear Sheldon Keefe pump his tire and saying he's back to being his dominant self, but it's not like, how can the coach not say that after what you just see? Like, it's not, we're not, there's no Toronto bias here. If you ask anybody else in another market, how Austin Matthews is playing, they would agree with that, with those sentiments just by watching what he's doing each and every night now. Yeah, he looked like the best player on the planet this weekend. I'll 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 say that hands down. Like I, yeah. like we've that. seen Connor McDavid have dominant performances. Like Austin Matthews is now getting to like close. If like that's like Connor McDavid esque from Austin Matthews. What what to you? What to you looks different? Like what what are you seeing outside of the numbers? Because like yeah, the numbers are there. Like he's scoring goals at a, mm-hmm. a, a crazy pace. He's got like what does he have eight goals in his last ten games? Like and he's got something to the effect of. 16 points in those 10 games like yeah the, the points are there but physically like what are you see- i'm curious get your your percent because i have somewhat of an answer but what are you seeing where you're like okay yeah this guy looks like he's taking over games again he's taking charge in my opinion he's not passing things off he's he's going to those nitty gritty areas like he that's where he's at his best when he's getting to those areas that goal scorers love to get to and put those chances in like you look at the game against florida where he walks around the net doesn't look like anything's going to come about and he turns around and he just wires one like that's only something really austin matthews can do at ease right yeah. other players can do it but they can't do it at the same level or consistency austin matthews can do it i think that's probably it consistency in his effort each and every night ever since that loss against the islanders it's almost like, and he got, you know, he took a couple of shots to the no man's land there. Oh, he took one to the pills against Carolina too, oh. literally right at the start of the game. Right I, at the start of the game. And I didn't know what happened, obviously. I think we we're all in the same boat where it's like, oh, he went down. Like, what? why did he go down off that face off? What happened? Did he like strain a groin? And then, of course, you see the replay, heel straight to the pills Poor yeah guy. i'm like i'm like i would have been down i would have been facing the ice not even able to move call an ambulance can of corn can of corn i'll be fine a can of corn please tell me get that reference what's the reference come on now <laughs> oh, <I'm sorry. laughs> that's the longest yard yeah buddy yeah yeah, yeah it is can of corn joey diaz give me a diet coke i'll be good <laughs> um yeah, for me, it's just like he's just skating so much. Like his his feet are moving. Like it's not that he's just skating, but his feet are constantly moving in the offensive zone. He's like weaving in and out of traffic to find those pockets to get those shots off from all over the ice. And even if you watch like the power play in this game against Nashville was so electric tonight. Like they were just – and it's it's because, honestly, they, they all just move and rotate around. Like, it's so fluid. Like, if you're on the half wall, and I'm using quotations, you may start on the half wall. You may start in the – like, but it, that doesn't mean that's where you're going to finish, right? Like, that's just – I think that's what's honestly probably so difficult to defend this, this least power play, which is now up to second in the league, and it's been one of the top power play units since the new year. Um, and it's because it's it's – Unlike last season, where it became so predictable, they were just going to try and find Matthews kind of in his office, and he was going to try and rip a one-timer. I think they realized that teams definitely were leaning into that, and they were starting to cheat and expect that, and they had to figure out a way to do something else, and and they have. Like tonight, I mean, a shot from Morgan Riley, right? Like, when does Morgan Riley ever shoot the puck on the power play? Never. But now he's shooting pucks on the power play, creates a rebound, Boom, John Tavares pounces on it in front, right? A, a, a pass down low, bumped up front, you know, literally a, a low to high type of thing, or a high to low bump out in front to John Tavares in tight, and he does his work, you know, in his office. Like, there's just so many different ways that they can beat you and the way that they just move the puck around. I don't know, Nashville's not a playoff team. They're not the greatest team, but it was uh, really impressive to see, you know, this that that power play get going and, and obviously Austin Matthews taking charge to your point and really attacking and being a much more uh, intimidating factor out there on the ice and not just in the offensive end defensively as well like bumping guys off pucks hounding pucks you know being in, in good position defensively not allowing guys to uh to to cut into the middle of the ice like not allowing those seam passes like he's really been 
exceptional uh, on both ends of the ice. And best time for that to happen is now. He's been great. Uh, another guy who I think we need to have a little chat about based off of his performance against um, the Nashville Predators is goaltending prospect Joe Wall. He looked fantastic. And a lot of people sitting here thinking it was all up in the Discord. If you guys aren't following our Discord yet, make sure you do. We'll put it in the in the comment in the uh, yeah in the description below the link to our Discord. Lots of people thinking, hey, could could this guy maybe start some games for us down the stretch? Could he factor into the playoff situation between the pipes? Why don't we have that conversation on the other side, Dave? Uh, before we get into any of that, though, let me tell you guys about one of our show sponsors today, and it's Built Bar. Looking for a delicious treat, but don't want all that fat and calories, then you got to try a Built Bar. We just got through the holidays. And I know that my goal is to eat a little bit healthier this year. And if you're like me and you want to eat healthier, but you you know, you don't want to compromise the taste, then, man, I've got just the thing for you. you got to try Built Bar. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious, you don't even think that they're good for you. They're perfect for that New Year's resolution. What makes Built Bar so good, for starters? 100%. Real chocolate, that's right. It's covered in 100% real chocolate. They've got unbelievable flavors. you got churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond. I'm really not sure how Bilt does it, but these bars do truly taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros. Only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, but a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't even need to wait around to get your box. For years, I've been telling you guys about ordering Bilt bars at Bilt.com. But now you can get them at your local Walmart or your Sam's Club down in the States. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk up to the pharmacy section. Grab yourself a box of Built Bars. If you're close to a Sam's Club, run in. Grab yourself a box. You know, hip flavors, brownie batter, churro. And trust me, you can thank me later. Built Bar is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. Go to Built.com using the promo code LOCK15. Get 15% off your next order. That's Built.com. Use the promo code Locked On. 15 at BuiltBar.com. Welcome back into the Locked On Lease podcast. Mike Stefano and Dave Morissuti. A split this weekend against the Carolina Panthers and the Nashville Predators. A loss to Carolina. A win against Nashville. But two games that are very encouraging for a team that's looking to shore things up heading into the postseason. Um, one position that we, we we kind of assume is already shored up. You know, we don't know how the defensive pairing is going to shake out. There's still question marks about how the four groups are going to kind of shake out, especially once Ryan O'Reilly gets back. But the one thing that I did think was pretty well set in stone, unless injuries occur, obviously that would change things, was goaltending. Ilya Samsonov, Matt Murray. Those are going to be the two guys that this team is going to be riding with. And if they both were healthy, those are the guys – that would lead the Maple Leafs into the playoffs and hopefully on a big, long run. Do you think that is still going to happen? Or is Joseph Wall, who had himself a night, played spectacularly, can he put himself in the conversation and maybe we can have a pretty solid trio potentially come playoff time like what, what are your thoughts on that, Dave? It's it's funny because like we, we were just talking about the Carolina Hurricanes who are currently had a three goalie rotation mm. throughout the season. It's not unheard of. And like, I've been keeping a close eye on Joseph wall this season, ever since he signed that extension and hearing that starting next season, he does not require waivers. I said like, this is a make, this is a big season for Joseph wall. And he started the year injured dealing with obviously the recovery from a shoulder injury. He comes back with the Marlies unbeatable, like literally unbeatable. Yeah. I think it was 14 and zero or something like that, or maybe 13 and one. And then got call- his first call up to the NHL after that. Yeah. So he goes on this incredible run with the Marlies. He gets called up and he's won three of his four starts in, in the NHL this season, obviously a limited sample size. I get it. But the most impressive part about all this is, you know, he had a game this season where he faced 58 shots and he stopped 56 of them. That to me right there shows that there is potential in in this goaltender right now. And when you look at this goaltending position for the Leafs, I've been craving for a a goalie that they could draft and develop. Because you know why? Because I am tired of the team having to constantly trade assets 
for a goaltender and then you know potentially that goaltender not working out then you got to trade assets again to get rid of the damn goaltender uh, this is a like and you got you got samson off for nothing you just had to sign the guy to a contract. Obviously, Murray, you didn't pay anything to get him other than the salary. Like, this is a great situation for Leafs in that regard that you're you've got options. Before we couldn't, we didn't want any of the guys in net last year at, at certain points. My my issue here is there aren't many games left. Like Samsonov, I'm I he can I don't think he needs to play a whole lot. Matt Murray, they probably want him to play a little bit. I just don't know if they're gonna if Sheldon Keefe, he's already dealing with the eleven and seven stuff. I don't know if he wants to deal with the three goalie rotation. But Joseph Wall, in my opinion, deserves that opportunity to show what he can do because uh they said it on the broadcast. I'll give them the credit on the broadcast that they said, who knows? What if like Murray and Samsonov look terrible? Why not you you got you so much riding on this season if both goaltenders aren't stepping up, why not give the young guy who's clearly hungry for opportunity right now, a chance to show what he can do. Well, that's the, that's the ultimate question. Like, can, can he factor in here? It's tough. It's because if this was earlier in the season, I would a hundred percent agree with it, but because there's only nine games left, that means you only have nine games left to get these guys going and making a decision. I just don't know if you can factor him into a playoff start right now, because I think Samsonov deserves that first crack. I don't think I haven't been in, totally impressed with Murray's game other than the one against Florida. Like he hasn't looked spectacular. Even Sheldon Keefe kind of says like you can't co- constantly have to score four or more goals to win a game. Like yeah. he, he kind of was throwing Murray under the bus without throwing Murray under the bus in a way. So I think th- the only way I can see that happening is if Murray is just like in his next start, he's not good. And Sheldon Keefe is just like, Kids got the hot hand. Kids playing better. He gives us the better chance right now. Yeah, I, I, I do wonder. I do wonder how much that will factor in, it, just because of the unique situation that this organization is in this year, where it's they have to win. Like yeah. they have to win around. And if the hot hand is Joe Wall, which I don't think we could say that yet. It's no. one game, and I guess you could say four games when he's played all season. But like. Two I games this month. Yeah, like I, I don't think you could sit there and, and say there's also okay, Nashville Predators who aren't exactly yeah yeah and like there was no Duchesne for most of that game, no Ryan Johansson for that game, you know Tanner Janot is no longer on that team. Like they don't really have much offense in general. But um, it, with the Marlies this year, 19 games, he's 16 two and one with a 930 save percentage. In the four games he's played in the NHL this year, and that's not including tonight's game, I don't think actually. The because uh, now he's played five games, probably. No, he's he's played four. Uh, he's played four games, so it's all updated. Oh, it's all updated. Okay, a nine thirty four save percentage. Again, very small sample size, so I don't think that I'm ready to say like this guy is part of the goalie competition in the final nine games, but I do think that it is very satisfying knowing that he is playing this well, where if a one of them falter, which we haven't really seen yet, thankfully, but what I think is more important is that Matt Murray gets injured at some point and can't go. At least there's a little bit more confidence in, in Joe wall stepping up and being the next next man up than there was last year if it would have been Shalgren or the year before when it was Michael Hutchinson. So at the very least, you have three goalies that you feel comfortable with if they had to start or play playoff games. I think that you could at least be satisfied with if you're a Leafs fan. Whether or not he becomes part of the conversation as as they tandem into like a a trandom, uh, like a a three-way trio tandem thing. Is it just a trio? Maybe it's a trio, I suppose, is what it probably could be called. I don't see that being the case. But uh, should one get injured or should one really falter, there is another guy who can be part of the conversation. Um, As for next year, do I think he's the goalie of the future for this team? That, I think, is very likely. 
actually. They've got him signed under contract for the next couple of seasons after this one. Sweet number, too. Very, I think he's making like 800K or something like that. And maybe not anyway, it's sub a million. And to your point that you mentioned, he's not waiver eligible. So he would have to clear waivers. And if you're going into next season, eh, you might want to keep this guy. He's drafted, developed, and he's cheap as well. So that's that's an interesting little wrinkle going into next year. But I think for this season in particular, it's still Samson and Murray's net, I think. Wald's been a nice story. He was terrific tonight. And my group chat was spent uh, literally going back and forth with Frank Corrado and our, my producer from Leaves Lunch. Literally going back and forth with a bunch of like puns with Wall's name, it was uh, it was quite funny. Uh, I will say that, um, but ultimately, I, I I don't think that he'll be. He's going to usurp one of those guys for one of those top roles in the crease. I'll just uh, I'm just going to add he is signed again for two more years after this at seven hundred and sixty six thousand dollars. That's the cap hit under 800,000. That is some tidy business right there. There you go. And I would expect him to be the least number two goalie next year. What happens with one of Murray who is under contract or Samsonov, who's a restricted free agent. I do not know, but I would expect for Joseph Wall to factor in next season. Not quite yet, but next year, I think that he will would not surprise it wouldn't surprise me the Leafs are at a point where you get you can save some money on the cap by trading i don't know if you can trade murray i don't think a buyout's put an option i don't know why i have to look no, at the buyout they with murray too like his money is stupid like he's owed eight million dollars next year in actual cash so yeah. his 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 contract was so backloaded very backloaded i think Part of the thing, too, is because Ottawa retains salary, if the lease were to buy out Murray, I think Ottawa takes a hit on that, too. I think that's how it works with when you're when you're buying out a retangle. So actually, if you want, no, to- I think I think they just have the. Just the the retention, I don't know if they get additional, buy. I actually have no idea. We'll have to look, have to we'll have to look into that because that could be an option, too. If the Leafs decide, you know what, it's cheaper for us to buy out Matt Murray. And if the cap hit isn't too egregious, I'd do it. If you feel like you need, but only if you feel like you need to do it. I'm not saying you it is egregious. Out. Like look it up, look it up on cap friendly. I feel like it is egregious. Either way, I don't think that's. Uh, Let's see here. Just because he's making so much actual money, I don't know if like it might be buyout proof. What's the buyout result for him? So if we buy him out at June, apparently according to. June fifth, if I uh, buy out, buy him out on June fifteenth, twenty twenty three, because there's eight million dollars remaining. Apparently, the cap hit the lease would actually oh save five million this year, but then it would cost them two million the following year. That might actually be worth it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I thought that it'd be more because oh no, because the money is more actually. So that's kind of how that works. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's interesting that's because you got to because you the good thing is that there's no salary like salary bonuses there right so you're just taking that base salary and you're that's what you're equaling out I think that's how it works and 24 25 is when we expect that massive jump yeah in uh, in the salary cap so that would be it's also the year that they got to resign Mitch Marner but uh Anyways, that's, we'll get there. That's we'll, a problem for 2024. <laughs> yeah, it's a problem. We'll, we'll, when we get there, we can talk about that. Um, uh, anyone else who uh, stood out to you this weekend? I think we got to give some love to Justin Hall. I think he's yeah. played. Excellent. I think he's played excellent, man. And I thought tonight he had a really good game too. Absolutely blew up. Um, oh, who did he blow up? Was it Trennan or was it Trennan who came after? Him? Asplin. Asplin. Yeah, Rasley yeah. just blew him up along the boards. You love to see it. If this is the Justin Hall, if you take Justin Hall from this game, you play him the playoffs and playing him with Mark Giordano, I can live with that. The 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 pairings we saw tonight, McKay Brody, Gio Hall, Riley Shen. That's I think that's what we see game one. I think that's if you yeah, I think that that's it. It sucks for Timothy Lugrin, but 
you have to go with the guys who are playing the style you need to play to win and doing the things you need to do to win. Yeah, Shanner was throwing his body around too. Yeah, and you look, playoffs, knock on wood, there's no major injuries, but injuries can happen. Timothy Logan just got to be ready for it. Absolutely. All right, buddy. Uh, if there's anything else you want to get to, speak now. Hold your peace. What a game. What a weekend for John Tavares. I thought he was really good in Nashville. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Because he was what, like seven games straight without a goal, and then boom, a couple of Genos here. He he called, we, kind of, we called him out last week, and Sheldon Keep kind of called him out. He wasn't doing what he needed to. That, like, also, Alexander Kerfoot, he shot a puck into the net <laughs> and not in the shootout with actual defenders on him. Well, that happened the other night, also. Yeah, but not two, more. Not two goals two. in to three games for Alex Kerfoot. Oh man, man's on fire. Hopefully, he hasn't met his quota. <laughs> this is guy. He's he needs to do a little more of that. I think he. I think uh, Sheldon Keith is. You're going to be seeing a lot of Alexander Kerfoot on that second line going forward. Well, definitely, I would. I would think we would see it uh, in the next game. How? Uh, yeah, we'll see it in the next game for sure. Hmm. I believe on Wednesday. We'll get into this more tomorrow. I believe on Wednesday is the first, like the game that they play against uh, the Panthers might be the first game. If I'm not mistaken, that uh, Ryan O'Reilly is eligible to return. And they said on the broadcast too, that is technically the first game he can come back. He was on the ice shooting the puck and was part of his spitting practice. It's an encouraging sign. I don't know. They, they, they are going to be very cautious with this, but if yeah. he's cleared and he's looking good, they're going to want to get some chemistry going. Uh, so, I mean, it wouldn't. I'm going to that game on Wednesday, so. I'll probably be there too. So, so hopefully he does play, because I actually haven't seen him play live yet. Because between me going on vacation and, like, having to, to head back to Niagara for a couple of functions and stuff, like, I haven't actually been here for home games since the trade. Mm-hmm. So I haven't been able to, to watch him play live on this team. So I would love for him to, to come in and, and play on Wednesday. I think that'd be sweet. Um, there's another conversation for us. Maybe we can have this tomorrow, actually, since, you know, there's a couple of days in between uh, the next game, but there is a discussion to be had about load management and whether or not we expect to see this start to happen with the Maple Leafs. We saw it happen and we'll probably continue to see it with the defensemen. But will it creep into the forward group? We saw it happen in Boston. We've seen it before in Tampa. I'm curious if we could see it happen here in Toronto as well. Why don't we save that conversation and have it tomorrow? Because I think it's a worthy one. Um, but that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Lockdown Leafs podcast on all podcast platforms. Receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morissuti. Follow the show as well, Locked On Leafs. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead, smash that like button. Leave a comment down below as well. Let us know your thoughts on uh, on you know anything we said in today's game. What encouraged you most about this weekend? Let us know down below. Uh, we'll be back with another episode for you guys tomorrow. Until then, keep locked right here on Locked On Leafs.